Okay, we're still talking about the intermediate value theorem. And in this section, we're going to look at some more examples. And all of these examples deal with finding roots for equations or finding solutions for equations. And here's the first one. Show that the equation has a root on the given interval. This is the equation. 2x cubed minus 6x plus 1 equals 0 on the interval 1, 2. Now, this is a cubic equation. And it's helpful to think of this as a cubic function f of x is 2x cubed minus 6x plus 1 equals 0. And a cubic function might look like this, or it might just have a little wobble in the middle. But imagine the x-axis here, and I don't know exactly what this function looks like off the top of my head, although I know it's a cubic, I know it has to cross the axis. And we're trying to show that it crosses the axis somewhere between an x value of 1 and an x value of 2. So this is a problem similar to finding the zeros of a function. Although we don't have to actually find the zero or any of the zeros, we just have to show that it has one somewhere on this interval. And we can use the intermediate value theorem to show that. I'm going to find f of 1, and I'm going to find f of 2. And watch what happens when we do this. f of 1 is just 2 times 1 cubed minus 6 times 1 plus 1. 2 minus 6 plus 1 is negative 3. And then f of 2 is 2 times 2 cubed, that's 16, minus 6 times 3, 6 times times 2, so that's minus 12, plus 1. 16 minus 12 is 4, plus 1 is 5. So this graph actually does look something like the function. Down here it has a value, a y value of negative 3, and over here it has a y value of positive 5. So where does it have a 0, a value of 0? Well, a y value of 0, 0 is between negative 3 and 5. So this function is continuous. 0 is between 3 and 5. And the intermediate value theorem applies because it's a continuous function. Somewhere between 1 and 2, it must go through all values between negative 3, should be a negative right there, between negative 3 and 5. And 0 is between negative 3 and 5. Therefore, there is some x value on this interval between 1 and 2 where f of x is equal to 0. And this is not hard. You should be able to spell out the logic in words, but it should also be abundantly clear from a simple sketch. If you go along this curve from this point to this point, and now think about as you move along this curve, think about your y values. You start at negative 3, and you go to positive 5. And on that little journey, you're going from negative 3 to positive 5 in a continuous fashion. There's no breaks or, gra or gaps in the graph. So going from negative 3 to positive 5 involves going through every value in between negative 3 and 5. And since 0 is between negative 3 and 5, you have to go through 0 somewhere on that interval. Here's another example. Show that the equation x cubed equals the square root of x plus 4 has a solution on the interval 1 comma 2. Hmm. How will we tackle this? Well, let's take this equation x cubed equals the square root of x plus 4 and let's uh, just transpose this, put this over on the other side so it's like this. x cubed minus the square root of x plus 4 equals 0. And now think of this left side here as a function. Let's think of f of x equals x cubed minus the square root of x plus 4. And think about finding the zeros of that function. Except we don't have to find a zero. We just have to show that it has a zero on the interval 1 comma 2. Now uh, let's find f of 1. f of 1 is going to be, if we put in a 1 here, that's 1 cubed minus the square root of 5. So that's 1 minus the square root of 5. And I don't know off the top of my head what that is, but I know that the square root of 5 is bigger than 1. So 1 minus that is going to be a negative number. This is some negative number. And I don't even need to calculate it. 
I'm just going to take note of the fact that it's a negative number. And let's find f of 2. 2 is the other end of our interval. f of 2 is going to be 2 cubed, which is 8, minus the square root of, what will that be, 2 plus 4 minus the square root of 6. And I know that the square root of 6 is less than 8. So 8 minus the square root of 6. Even without calculating this, I can tell that that's going to be some positive number. some positive number. So I have a function. I don't even know exactly what it looks like, but I know if I have a x value of 1 and an x value of 2, and I'm graphing this function, at 1 it's some negative number, and by the time we get to 2 it's some positive number. So if we're going from left to right and graphing this, and we're drawing this function in, at some point between 1 and 2, you know, somewhere in there, I don't know exactly where, but, but somewhere in there it has to cross it has to cross the axis. It has, there has to be some x value c between 1 and 2 where it has a y value of 0. And if you want to state this in a rigorous fashion, you would say that x cubed is a polynomial, so it's continuous. And then this, the square root of x plus 4, that's the composition of a root function and a linear function. And the, the root function and the linear function are both continuous over their domain. And so the, the composition of those two functions is continuous. So this is continuous. And then this is the sum of two functions. This plus negative that. And the sum of two continuous functions is continuous. So to, to really be rigorous about it, you would want to establish that f of x is a continuous function. Therefore, the intermediate value theorem applies. And f of 1 is negative, and f of 2 is positive. So 0 is between a positive number and a negative number. So there must be some x value between 1 and 2 where the function takes on a y value or a height of 0. So we've shown that this equation has a solution on this interval.